Elon Musk just provided quite a few interesting updates for Tesla's Optimus robot program, which I'm going to cover in this video, so stick around. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. When it comes to real-world artificial intelligence or real-world AI, according to Elon Musk, Tesla is far ahead of the competition. This, of course, involves not only their full self-driving program, but also additionally, it includes their Optimus robot program, which includes similar hardware to their vehicles, but it's of course used in a different way for a humanoid robot. Now, when it comes to vehicles, solving full self-driving, full autonomy for vehicles has been a massive undertaking, but Tesla is making great progress and the latest versions of their full self-driving supervised software are extremely impressive and Tesla plans to actually launch a robo-taxi service in the Austin, Texas area in the summer of this year. So that's pretty exciting. This is really going to happen, it looks like, in the somewhat near future, and then eventually that will roll out to more markets. But Tesla's making great progress in that regard. When it comes to Tesla's Optimus humanoid robot program, there are, of course, some carryovers that they can take from their full self-driving program, not only hardware, but some of the learnings with their real world AI, and they can carry some of that over to their Optimus program. But the reality is Optimus is going to need a lot of training. In fact, according to what Elon Musk recently said, Optimus is going to require a magnitude of more training versus Tesla's full self-driving program in order to fully utilize the capabilities of the humanoid robot. On that topic, here's what Elon Musk recently said in Tesla's Q3 2024 investors conference call that was held on January 29th of this year. The training needs for Optimus humanoid robot are probably at least ultimately 10x of what is needed for the car, at least to get to the full range of useful role. Now, when it comes to making sense of what Elon Musk mentioned, when you think about a vehicle, a full self-driving vehicle, it's very difficult to solve full autonomy as Tesla has proven. And although they've made great progress, it's a very difficult task. However, keep in mind that what a vehicle does, while the world, it has a lot of different things that can be thrown at a vehicle, um, and there can be a lot of unpredictability in the world, the core tasks that are needed for a fully autonomous vehicle to operate are small as compared to a humanoid robot, which will be able to, when fully utilized, be able to do quite a bit more than a vehicle. However, I do want to bring up something that I thought about when I give this deeper thought, and that's the fact that when it comes to the training aspect and putting an, an Optimus robot out in the real world versus testing a full self-driving vehicle in the real world, there's a lot bigger stakes when it comes to a vehicle making a mistake versus an Optimus robot, a humanoid robot making a mistake. When you think about it, if a car is going 75 miles an hour down the highway and it makes a mistake and it crashes, that's going to harm the vehicle, potentially harm the person inside that vehicle, and maybe even kill the person in the vehicle. That's a really big stake. And so small little mistakes in full self-driving vehicles and in autonomous vehicles can lead to really serious consequences. However, when it comes to a humanoid robot, while a humanoid robot could cause some physical harm, a small mistake with a humanoid robot is less likely to cause so much damage and less likely, I believe, to kill someone or hurt someone or cause high amounts of financial damage. With that being said, during that conference call, Elon Musk added, you can say like, how many different roles are there for a humanoid robot versus a car? A humanoid robot has probably 1000 times more uses and more complex things than in a car. That doesn't mean the training scales by 1000, but it's probably at 10 X. Now, one of the interesting things about Optimus versus a vehicle is the fact that right now, Tesla has millions of vehicles on the road collecting data. And that's been a big benefit and a big, huge competitive advantage that Tesla has had over competitors over the years because they have a lot of data they can feed into their systems to train their neural net. And this is one of the reasons why they've been able to make such great progress, especially with their vision only system, which is really impressive. However, when it comes to humanoid robots, they're going to have to invest a lot more of their own internal time to train the robot, at least at first. Currently, a lot of Optimus's training is done via teleoperation, where a human is wearing sensors and remotely controlling the robot's motions, which also simultaneously trains the neural net. This is what we've seen in past Tesla videos, and even at Tesla's AI event, where Optimus robots were mingling with the crowd and serving drinks and snacks, 
These robots, as we learned, were not fully autonomous, but were being teleoperated. However, one of the benefits that Tesla has that will bring down the actual net cost of this is the fact that Tesla can use these robots in their factories, and that can actually save them some money versus labor versus human labor, which that means that as they train these robots and as they actually save them money in factories, the net cost of training the robot will be lower than if they were just training them to send out to other people's factories. And so that's interesting that they can actually benefit from the training on the job there and save themselves money as these robots become more and more competent and as they can do more and more complex tasks for Tesla. Now beyond teleoperation, I'm pretty certain that Tesla is also working with virtual training sets where they're actually doing virtual training on computers with Tesla Optimus. However, it looks like at least for now, teleoperation will play a big role in this. So relying on teleoperation is not only difficult to scale, but it can be very expensive. And this is something that Elon Musk brought up in that conference call as well when he said, quote, now you can do this progressively. He's of course talking about training Optimus right there. So it doesn't mean Tesla is going to spend like $500 billion in training compute because we will obviously train Optimus to do enough tasks to match the output of robots. And obviously the cost of training is dropping dramatically with time. I think long term, Optimus has the potential to be north of $10 trillion in revenue, like it's really bananas, so that you can obviously afford a lot of training compute in that situation. In fact, even $500 billion of training compute in that situation would be quite a good deal. Now, when it comes to Tesla's training compute, in Tesla's investor presentation PDF, under the artificial intelligence software and hardware section, it was written, quote, in Q4, we completed the deployment of Cortex, a 50K H100 training cluster at Gigafactory, Texas. Cortex helped enable version 13 of FSD Supervised, which boasts major improvements in safety and comfort thanks to 4.2X increase in data, higher resolution video inputs, 2X reduction in photon to control latency, and redesigned controller, among other enhancements. Specifically on the topic of Optimus, it was written, quote, Progress on Optimus hardware and software continued in Q4, including the latest generation hand, robust locomotion, and training on additional tasks ahead of planned pilot production in 2025. Now it looks like Tesla is primarily using that training cluster for their FSD software. However, I imagine, and I could be wrong on this, but I imagine Tesla is using some of that compute for their Optimus robot training as well. And Tesla can build out more of these in the future. So it's going to require a lot of compute, but Tesla has a lot of resources and expertise in this field. And so I believe that Tesla is going to be successful with Optimus and make great strides very quickly. During that conference call, Elon Musk also made some statements about production volume estimates for Optimus in the future when he said, quote, the normal internal plan calls for roughly 10,000 Optimus robots to be built this year. Will we succeed in building 10,000 exactly by the end of December this year? Probably not. But will we succeed in making several thousand? Yes, I think we will. When it comes to Optimus robots being used outside of Tesla's internal use and selling them to other factories, it doesn't look like that's going to happen until version two of the robot. The robot version that they plan to build thousands of this year is their version one. Elon Musk said on this topic, quote, those Optimus in use at the Tesla factories for production design one will inform how we change for production design two which we expect to launch next year. Later on in the conference call, Elon Musk added more details on this topic when he mentioned, quote, and I think probably with version two, it is a very rough guess because there's so much uncertainty here. Very rough guess that we start delivering Optimus robots to companies that are outside of Tesla in maybe the second half of next year, something like that. Now, when it comes to future production estimates, beyond the thousands of robots that Tesla plans to build, this year, it looks like Elon wants the robot to scale to wild numbers of robots being built. Elon Musk on this topic specifically said, quote, and our goal is to ramp up Optimus production faster than maybe anything has ever been ramped, meaning like aspirationally, an order of magnitude ramp per year. Now, if we aspire to an order of magnitude ramp per year, perhaps we only end up with half an order of magnitude per year, but that's the kind of growth we're talking about. It doesn't take very many years before we're making 100 million of these things a year if you go up by, let's say, a factor of 5x per year. When it comes to how Tesla will scale to those high numbers, Elon Musk added, the current line that we're designing is for roughly 1,000 units a month of Optimus robots. 
The next line would be for 10,000 units a month. The line after that would be for 100,000 units a month. Now, when it comes to some of the specific tasks that these robots would be doing internally for Tesla, Elon Musk added, well, for this year, we expect to just close the loop with Optimus being used internally at Tesla because we obviously can easily use several thousand humanoid robots at Tesla for, I think, the most boring, annoying tasks in the factory, like the tasks nobody wants to do, where we have to beg people to do this task. And that's also some of the easiest use cases for us to have Optimus do things like load the hopper, like body line transporting pieces of sheet metal to the robot welding line for the body. And you just have to nonstop take things from one fixture to another fixture. And it's a very boring job. Elon Musk added, yeah, there's a ton of boring jobs, tedious jobs, slightly dangerous jobs. So we expect to use Optimus for those tasks at our factories, and that will help us close loop for improvement this year. Obviously, if there's not enough demand for humanoid robots, it won't matter how many Tesla produces, but it looks like Elon Musk is predicting massive demand for their robots. And he specifically mentioned, quote, but like I said, this is such an exponential ramp that it will go from no one's receiving humanoid robots to these things coming out like crazy. We can't build enough. We're always going to be in the we can't build enough situation. Demand will not be a problem even at a high price. When it comes to the internal cost of producing these robots, Elon Musk added, once we're at a steady state of above 1 million units a year, I think the production, I'm confident at 1 million units a year that the production cost of Optimus will be less than $20,000. So like with any production ramp, initially it's going to cost quite a bit more than $20,000 to build an Optimus robot for Tesla, but that cost comes down as they have economies of scale with buying the materials needed to build those robots and building those various components in-house. And also when it comes to the efficiencies of their production lines, as they learn and get better at producing these robots. But it really comes down to the fact also that building a humanoid robot is way less complex of a task than building a vehicle. Elon Musk reiterated, quote, if you compare the complexity of Optimus to the complexity of a car, so just the total mass and complexity of Optimus is much less than a car. With that being said, even if the cost of producing Optimus at scale is $20,000, that doesn't mean Tesla is just gonna sell it for like $25,000, $30,000 and make a small amount of margin. The actual value of a humanoid robot that can do various tasks, especially on the industrial side, will be very great. For example, just to illustrate a five-year span of paying a human to do basic tasks, so I'm going to use the minimum wage in Los Angeles, California, versus a humanoid robot, what that could cost to do that same amount of work. If a human is making $17.27 per hour, and they work 40 hours a week for 50 weeks out of the year, you can see that over a five year period of time, their wages would be over $172,000. And this is not even taking into account that over five years, that minimum wage is likely to go up. This is just with the information that we have now. In addition, when you add the cost of benefits that employers actually spend for employees commonly as well, based on some average data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics and specifically using data for smaller companies here, not even the higher numbers that larger companies spend on employees, going with that smaller number, over a five year period of time, a company would likely spend at least close to $50,000 in benefits on an employee. When you add in miscellaneous costs, which I've gone on the very low end, for onboarding and training a new employee. This brings you to a very conservative $223,900 for a very entry-level employee in Los Angeles over that five-year period of time. If a humanoid robot can take over that task, and even if the purchase cost of that humanoid robot is $80,000, and even if maintenance costs are $10,000 over that five-year period of time, and repair costs are $10,000 over that five-year time, and the energy cost to power that robot is $5,000 over that five-year period of time, I don't know what those costs will actually be, but even if those costs are high like that, the total basic cost of the robot to the company in that situation would be $105,000. So when you compare that cost to an entry level employee, a company could potentially save over $100,000 over a five year period of time per robot in this basic scenario. Beyond that, this is once again minimum wage, a very entry level position in the Los Angeles area. As the robot is able to do more and more complex tasks, its hourly rate equivalency would go up making the robot worth more and more over time. With that being said, when it comes to the price that Tesla will charge for the Optimus robot, Elon Musk mentioned, quote, the price of Optimus will be set by the market demand. With that being said, Tesla still has quite a bit of work to do before these robots are going to be fully utilized. 
and being sold to outside companies and really doing a ton of useful tasks for people. It's going to be a while before that happens, but I believe Tesla is uniquely qualified not only to scale the production side of these robots, but actually to have them be able to do complex tasks because of their expertise in real world AI. Will this all happen as fast as Elon Musk wants it to? Likely not. However, Tesla is very uniquely qualified when it comes to their real world expertise and their manufacturing expertise. If any company is going to do it, I believe it's going to be Tesla. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also like to say thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.